Good morning. Welcome to you all on this, the fifth Sunday in Lent, for our service of morning prayer. We are unable to gather together today in person here in St Mary's Kalani because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Instead, we meet over the internet, in spirit and in truth. You are most welcome. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. We have gathered together today in spirit, in the name of Christ, to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to seek forgiveness of our sins, and to pray for the needs of the world, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Let us worship the Lord. All praise to his name. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, Creator of all, to you be glory and praise forever. You have founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time you made us in your own image, and in these last days you have spoken to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts. Your Spirit ever renew our lives, and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, beginning at verse 6. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. But it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of God does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit that dwells in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is number 130. Out of the depths I have cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to mark what is done amiss, O Lord, who can stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him, in his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than the night watch for the morning, more than the night watch for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 11 beginning at verse 1. 
Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was one of the sisters who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after he said this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was merely referring to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away. And many of the Jews who had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Martha and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. When she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her, because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying. Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. 
Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that, if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we are most troubled by the deaths of those people here in this land who have caught this virus, this contagion, as we are most saddened by the news of more deaths each day, as we are concerned and worried about the spread of the virus, as we are fearful for ourselves and for our loved ones, we reflect upon this reading from the Gospel and from Paul's letter to the Romans. We pray that we may be those who are of the Spirit, those who are supported and helped by Christ's Spirit in us. For he gives us not bodies of flesh that die and wither away, but spiritual bodies that last into eternity. We give thanks to Jesus for this story of the raising of Lazarus from the dead. It is through death, it is after death, that we see the glory of God revealed. We pray for those who are very ill in hospital, and we ask God that his presence may be with them in spirit and in truth, sustaining them in their last hours. Amen. We say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our prayers today, we use the litany. God the Father, creator of heaven and earth, have mercy on us. God the Son, redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, giver of life, have mercy on us. God, holy, blessed and glorious Trinity, three persons in one God, have mercy on us. Save us, good Lord, from all sin and wickedness, from pride, hypocrisy and conceit, from envy, hatred and malice, and all uncharitableness. Save us, good Lord. 
from sins of thought, word and deed, from the lusts of the flesh, from the deceits of the world, and the snares of the devil. Save us, good Lord, from fire, storm and flood, from disease, pestilence and want, from war and murder, and from dying unprepared. Save us, good Lord, from all false doctrine, from hardness of heart, from contempt of your word and commandment, and from the evil of schism. Save us, good Lord. In times of sorrow and in times of joy, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment, save us, good Lord. Save us, Lord Christ, by the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your birth, childhood and obedience, by your baptism, fasting and temptation. Save us, Lord Christ, by your ministry in word and work, by your mighty acts of power and by your preaching of the kingdom. Save us, Lord Christ, by your agony and trial, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial. Save us, Lord Christ. By your mighty resurrection, by your glorious ascension, and by your sending of the Holy Spirit. Save us, Lord Christ. Hear us, good Lord. Govern and direct your holy church. Fill it with love and truth and grant it that unity which is your will. Hear us, good Lord. Give your church courage to preach the gospel and to make disciples of all the nations. Hear us, good Lord. Give knowledge and understanding to bishops, priests and deacons, that by their life and teaching they may proclaim your word. Hear us, good Lord. Give all people grace to receive your word and to bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. Hear us, good Lord. Bring all who have erred and are deceived into the way of truth. Hear us, good Lord. Guard and bless our rulers, especially those called to high office, to the Oroctus, those called to govern this land and its people. Grant that they may trust in you and seek your honour and glory. Hear us, good Lord. Bless our country. Give grace, wisdom and understanding to all in authority. Hear us, good Lord. Bless the European Union and draw us closer to one another in justice and in freedom. Hear us, good Lord. Bless those who administer the law that they may uphold justice in honesty and truth. Hear us, good Lord. Bless and keep all who maintain peace and safety. Hear us, good Lord. Give to all nations unity, peace and concord. Hear us, good Lord. Strengthen the faithful. Comfort and help the faint-hearted. Raise up those who fall and drive out all evil. Hear us, good Lord. Support and encourage all who are in poverty, those who are unemployed or in distress. Protect those whose work is dangerous 
and keep in safety all who travel. Hear us, good Lord. Keep fathers, mothers and children united in their family life and give them wisdom and strength in times of stress. Hear us, good Lord. Heal the sick, care for the old and lonely, and comfort the bereaved. Hear us, good Lord. Remember the poor who long to hear good news. Give us the will to strengthen them through acts of generous love. Hear us, good Lord. Show your pity on victims of strife, on those who are homeless and those who are hungry, on those who are prisoners and all who live in fear. Hear us, good Lord. Forgive our enemies, persecutors and slanderers, and turn their hearts. Hear us, good Lord. Guide and direct all who influence others through the written or the spoken word, through social media, and all who inspire mankind in science, industry, and art. Hear us, good Lord. Bless and keep all your people. Hear us, good Lord. Teach us to use the resources of the earth to your glory, that all may share in your goodness and praise you for your loving kindness. Hear us, good Lord. Saviour of the world, forgive our sins, known and unknown, things done and things left undone. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit, that we may amend our lives according to your holy word and share with all your people the joys of your eternal kingdom. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins. For turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives, Father forgive us, save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by the temptations in the world about us, Father, Forgive us, save us and help us. For living as if we are ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins, restore us to his image to praise and glorify his name, through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Collect for the Fifth Sunday in Lent Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, 
Grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us give thanks to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. For the love of our Father, the Maker of all, the Giver of all good things, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. For Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who lived and worked among us, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. For his suffering and death on the cross and his resurrection to new life, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. For his rule over all things, for his presence in the world, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, who teaches us and guides us, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the grace of the Spirit, in the work of the Church, and in the life of the world, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. And so as we prepare to go our different ways this day, thinking of those in need and praying for those in adversity, we ask the Lord God to be with us as we go out into the world. May the lips that have sung your praise always speak the truth. May the ears that have heard your word listen only to what is good and may our lives, as well as our worship, be always pleasing in your sight. For the glory of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, is with you, and will remain with you always. We go in the peace of God to love and serve our Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.